long time no see. <laughs> All right, so here I'm, I'm here today to talk about AI for UI. Now, what does AI stand for? I'm sure uh, a, a word comes to mind for this acronym, but what if it didn't have to mean artificial intelligence? We'll come back to that in just a bit. Hi, I'm Jordan, a product designer at, at Figma, working on AI. And I've been working on AI for quite some time now. Can you believe that GPT-3 came out, uh, it was four years ago, actually, in 2020. And one of my earliest explorations with the technology was imagining if GPT combined with Figma could help you design from a prompt. And I actually started with a plugin. So you could see I wrote this big, long prompt, pulled in some components from a design system, and it spit out something for you on the canvas. Now, this was, again, four years ago with GPT-3 in 2020. After that, I started a company called Diagram. I got so deeply fasc fascinated by exploring what AI meant for design that I started a company uh, about two years ago. And I wanted to show you a quick little snippet of the original pitch video just to show you the vision and how you can sort of start to see it come to life within Figma. And I've always kind of been curious in this uh, space around the intersection of design and AI and smart, intelligent design tools and you know what the opportunities are and the, the possibilities are, which I think continue to remain incredibly untapped, especially as it relates to product design. And, you know, the opportunity to think about two of my favorite technologies really coming together and, and thinking through the possibilities and what you can do. Uh, I think Figma and OpenAI together form a really incredible uh, opportunity to build really awesome tools. And I wanted to show you some of the experiments I've done over the years. So that was just a glimpse of uh, a pitch deck that I put together when I was starting that company and thinking about what Figma combined with AI could start to mean. And the reaction from a few years ago when I shared that and also some of my AI meets design experiments looked a little bit like this. People were wondering, you know, what does this mean for my job? Um, is it too late to switch to pottery? There's no way that AI is going to replace me. And this was the reaction just last week as we showed a few of our uh, community members our new AI features. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that's actually dope. Oh my gosh. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's cool. Oh, wow. Wait, that's amazing. Yes! <laughs> it's cool. That's really cool. Also, just freaky. Oh, there we go. It's working. Oh my god, this... Whoopee game changer. So I think there's actually an important reason for the change in that sentiment from a few years ago to now. Now, we love to use acronyms these days. I mentioned AI earlier. There's laugh out loud, oh my god, be right back, hypertext transfer protocol. JavaScript object notation. API is thrown around a lot. That's actually application programming interface. Did you know that GPT stands for uh, generative pre-trained transformer? So yes, every time we say chat GPT, we're really saying chat generative pre-trained transformer. And UX is user experience, of course, but maybe it should be UE. CTA, of course, is configs totally awesome. <laughs> Which is true, but also known as call to action. And UI is user interface. And the name for the redesigned Figma is UI3, or user interface 3. And you saw it earlier, and it's, it's really beautiful. Now, what about AI? What does AI stand for? Well, to most, it's artificial intelligence. 
unless you're Apple, of course, then it's Apple intelligence. <laughs> and I asked ChatGPT, you know, what is AI? And it said, it's the development of computer systems that can perform tasks typically requiring human intelligence, like learning, problem solving, and decision making. But what if it didn't have to mean artificial intelligence? What else could it mean? The original founding vision of Figma was to eliminate the gap between imagination and reality. And with Figma AI, we're getting even closer than ever to realizing that vision. And so, what if instead of artificial intelligence for AI, we thought of AI as augmenting our imagination? This really deeply resonated with me ever since James Buckhouse shared this from a talk in a blog post. AI will not mean the, deaths, the death of artists, intellectuals, or anyone else. Instead, it will mean our rebirth, but only if we make it so. Here's how. We must stop thinking of AI as artificial intelligence and instead think of it as augmented imagination. And so, what if we embraced AI not for the technology, but rather for what's possible? One of the things I've always found is that you've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. You can't start with the technology and try to figure out where you're going to try to sell it. And I've made this mistake probably more than anybody else in this room. And I've got the scar tissue to prove it. And I know that it's the case. And as we have tried to come up with a strategy and a vision for Apple, um, it started with what incredible benefits can we give to the customer? Where can we take the customer? Not, not starting with, let's sit down with the engineers and, and figure out what awesome technology we have and then how are we going to market that. Um, and I think that's the right path to take. Building AI is really challenging. You need to understand what the technology is capable of and not just do the simple thing or the easy thing that you know AI can be good at and balance that with your intuition for problem solving. Our approach with Figma AI is to address real pain points that impede your workflow and your craft. And there's this other acronym the last acronym, I promise, which is AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. And OpenAI states that our mission is to ensure that artificial general intelligence, or AI systems that are generally smarter than humans, benefits all of humanity. Now, the idea of a AGI sounds a little bit scary. What if we were to also reframe AGI in the context of Figma AI and creativity, just like augmenting your imagination? And it ends up turning into this acronym that I think reflects pretty nicely how we think about it and the ways that the features that we've built group themselves. So, AGI for Figma. Automation, generation, and iteration three areas that Figma AI is going to serve designers. Now, Dylan has this articulation of design, which I really love, which is design is art applied to problem solving. And basically, design lives at the intersection of applying your creativity and your artistry to solving real problems for real people. And AI inside of Figma lives at this intersection of features spanning automation, generation, and iteration. As you saw earlier today, from wiring up the first version of your prototype, to automatically filling placeholder content, to translating entire designs into different languages, to making an app to see if I should taste durian or not, 
Figma AI spans many parts of the design process, starting with automation. Automation are the types of things and features that help you stay in your flow state so you can focus on your craft. One of the most tedious parts of Figma that I, as I said earlier, never ever do is name my layers. And with automation, we think we found the perfect use case to apply a real pain point, and frankly, a meme in the design community to AI. So in this case, as you saw again, renaming layers. AI can understand the parts of your design that otherwise would have taken you quite some time to work through a really lengthy layer list and automate that uh, process for you, finding a pain point and, and solving it through automation. Another one that you saw earlier, uh, a tedious process in Figma, is getting started with wiring up an interactive prototype. And we found this really cool way for AI to understand the different parts across your designs to do an initial first pass of a prototype for you. So you can see, once again, it's drawing noodles one by one, connecting the dots. And again, automating a first pass of something that would have otherwise taken you quite some time. And then there's generation. Generation is core to making design accessible to all and inspiring you with new ideas and directions. Generation is about helping you create from scratch when you're stuck. Again, an example of what you saw today, now in Figma design with Figma AI, you can get started with just an idea by describing it in words to get a starting point. And so in this case, I'm uh, describing something vaguely similar to, to what we tried earlier today. And I'll start to get an output on the canvas. It works its way through trying to figure out what different components to pull in to start to formulate a design that I can take and riff on. It gives me an idea for perhaps something I hadn't otherwise thought of. I can pull the components and use them in other areas of my other designs and it just serves as a great ideation point and, and, and starting point. Even in FigJam, it's a lengthy process to draw a diagram by hand or a template. And sometimes you don't even know what it should look like. With Figma AI, you can go from a prompt to a full template to get a starting point to imagine, in this case, you know, an org chart for your team. It gets you quite a, way, quite a long uh, ways away from uh, that process and otherwise manually would have taken you quite some time. Mihika actually just showed this earlier as well. Another fun example of AI in Figma is the potential for it to work across all of our products. So here I've got a bunch of sticky notes after this, this brainstorm that I've done and uh, that, that's in FigJam and I'd like to convert it into a slide deck using, I still call it slides. <laughs> and AI can understand how to break down that summary from those sticky notes. You can choose a template that you want to convert it into a, a slide deck with, and it'll convert it into an outline of a deck that's a great starting point to help you get started. It's really cool. Again, something that would have taken you quite some time and a great you know, starting point for you to take and tweak however you'd like. And then, there's iteration. This is an area where we still have quite a bit of, of uh, you know, thinking to do and, and, and we can push much further, but we've got some really interesting things happening here. And iteration is the type of thing that helps you go far and wide, exploring different options until you start to land on the right solution. One of my absolutely personal favorite uh, AI features that we've built is called Visual Search. You also saw this earlier today, and now you can find anything in Figma if all you have is just a screenshot. And because I can find things even faster, I can get to iterating on this design I've found, or I might even get inspired by things I hadn't even seen uh, before across my team. And I can insert the real functional layers and get to iterating 
super fast. Another example of iteration is taking a design you're already working on. And in this example, uh, copywriting, it's this really tedious process where, as designers, we're often working with these really duplicative lists and, again, manually having to come up with these uh, text contents one by one would, would take quite a bit of time. Now Figma can detect repeating content in any existing design and help me iterate by filling in even more realistic copy. So, AGI, not this scary thing called artificial general intelligence, but rather we frame it at Figma as automation, generation, and iteration. Three areas where we're really helping designers improve their design process. Helping you stay in your flow state, letting you create from scratch, and iterating to go far and wide. And the acronym AI. Not artificial intelligence, but rather, I propose that you think of AI as augmenting your imagination instead of artificially replacing your intelligence. I know that at Figma, that's how we think about it. When I showed you earlier this reaction to some of the latest AI features, it was for a reason. Our approach with Figma AI is to address real pain points that impede your workflow and your craft, that augment your imagination. And this video is just so fun, so fun I wanted to show it to you one more time. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that's actually dope. Oh my gosh. Oh. Whoa, 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 that's cool. Oh, wow, wait, that's amazing. It's cool. That's really cool. Also, just freaky. Oh, there we go. It's working. Oh my god, this whoopee game changer. Thank you.